Hello, this is David Mandel once again, and uh, welcome to week six of CIS 240L Linux um, Systems Administration given in the summer of 2012. Um, uh, okay, the first thing, let us look at um, Caligator. Um, our event calendar in Portland and see what's coming up this week. Uh, tonight there's the SC Coders, um, wow, NC Coders event um, at midnight. Well, uh, you can still make that or or maybe that was, I, I guess that's already happened. Um, Intel, what now? Uh, at the Red Lion Inn. Uh, Portland Smalltalk users. Smalltalk is a language that's used a lot for uh, artificial intelligence. I've got a friend who did uh, use a lot of small part talk in his PhD dissertation. Um, okay. Um, on tomorrow night there is the social media users group meeting um, at Collective Agency. There's the Galois Tech Talk on Thursday. Uh, th on Thursday, there's a lot of things going on, including down at the bottom here, there's the um, Portland Linux Unix group, OSCON feedback and general questions. Um, I, I wish we had a better talk for that. I will be at that. In fact, I will be um, sort of leading that tomorrow night as the friend I have that's often been leading the group is out of town. And um, um, anyway, that's a cool thing. Uh, as I say, the Portland Linux Unix group is, is a cool group, as are many, many of the other groups in Portland. Um, here's a cool group up here, D uh, Democracy Lab hack session. Democracy Lab at democracylab.org is kind of an interesting group. Um, Portland Commodore uh, Club. Some of these old ancient um, computers like the Amiga, the Commodore, the um, I can't remember the other one that comes to my mind, were highly proprietary systems in their day and age. But as the company that sponsored them went under and are no longer around, no longer around many of those have become kind of hotbeds for open source activity because that's the only way they can keep those operating systems and software for those machines up and going actually they're kind of a combination of hagware, hardware hackers and software hackers to keep the whole thing going together so Things like the Commodore users group, the Amiga users group, um, the Atari users group, are um, those are very interesting. Um, there's also the Portland Area Robotics Group meeting on Saturday. Um, oh, and I should mention, uh, just by chance, there's an interesting thing on Saturday and Sunday, maybe Friday, Saturday, and Sunday going on in Brooks, Oregon, just north of um, uh, Brooks is like between on on I-5 between um, Salem and Woodburn. It's um, there's a museum there um, that has old power equipment, really cool stuff. Steam powered equipment, old railroads, um, um, lots of things, old logging equipment, lots of things of that type, and they're having their annual. Um, festival last weekend and this weekend. I try to go to that every few years and I, I intend on going to that myself. Um, it's not exactly high-tech hacking, but it is, well, those are our grandparents that, that, that did that sort of hacking. I mean, it's the same thing, only they're hacking on hardware and and, uh, and a lot of it is old, old stuff coming back from the 1920s, 1930s. Um, you know, it, it's got the same philosophy. It's it's just cool equipment that they're keeping together and um, um, and um, 
So, I, actually, if you want to report on that for Lab 12, that would be fine with me. <laughs> it's a little bit out of the lines of what I mentioned in Lab 12, but um, philosophically, it's in keeping. It's it's in keeping with the philosophy. So yeah, I, I I'd go with that. Um, that's a little bit extreme, but um, I could see that. Okay. Let's go back here. Uh, oh, one other thing we should mention. If I go over here and let's see what I've got here. Um, there, we've got a um, the course catalog. We are now in week six this week. And um, this is an eight week term, so we're coming down towards the end. I notice a lot of labs are not in yet. People are a little bit behind. Not bad, but don't let yourself get more behind or it will be bad. Um, we are starting to come towards the end of the term. Um, I, it's an eight week term, but that doesn't count finals week. So we've got a little bit more time than, um, than it looks like, but we're definitely uh, more than halfway through the term. Um, keep that in mind because we do want to um, maximize our learning and get as much out of this term as we can. So um, um, yeah, uh, quiz three closed this um, last Sunday. And if you missed quiz three for some reason, um, hopefully a good reason. Get a hold of me, and we'll see what we can do. Um, and this week we do not have a quiz, and then quiz four is is of course next week. Um, what we do have this week is lab nine, which I believe I haven't read it uh, uh, real recently. I wrote it, but I haven't read it real recently. But I believe that's the last of our three scripting labs. So um, that should be cool. And then we're reading um, chapter nine, which is the chapter in our book on um, the chapter in our book on um, processes and uh, managing Linux processes. And I have a number of videos on ma learn, uh, managing Linux processes. That's an important part of being a um, Unix systems administrator, especially killing, being able to kill rogue processes and restart things that are have gone astray. Uh, it also talks a, lot, a bit about process priority and how time slices are given out and how you can change the priority of a process. You will notice in my one vi in one of my videos, I give quite a, a little discussion on why I think people are people overdo this that they um, there is a tendency to change priorities more than needs to be done. Yeah, one should know how to change priorities, but some people, that's all they do in their life. They sit at a terminal changing the priority of jobs, and I think they screw it up more often than they improve the situation. Um, on most systems, not all, but on most systems, most of the time, or on most systems, almost all of the time, the default priorities work pretty well. There are exceptions. So, um, and then we discuss um, scheduling jobs and things like the cron, uh, the cron task, which um, cron is very, very important to any Unix systems administrator. Okay, the last thing I want to discuss is um, just to say I was going to say just a word or two about the ethics of computing. We did talk a little bit about uh, the ethical use of InMap in one of the uh, labs a while back. And that would also go for uh, the same thing would go for TCP dump, which is a command that allows you to look 
at a stream of anything going past your network card. So you can read all the data on the network. Um, or actually just poking around in um, people's email if, if you're running an email server and you have a lot of email on the system. Um, basically, as a systems administrator, you need to do that from time to time. Um, when problems arise, and sometimes you need the information from what's going on in order to fix things or to make sure your system is sufficiently secure or things like that. But it would be unethical to use that to invade somebody's privacy or to invade a system. Um, uh, however, using it on your own system to protect privacy, those are important commands. Uh, there's been discussion in the media lately, or I read something. There's been discussion for years on the ethics of um, accessing networks that are left open to the public to access them. Uh, I am a firm believer in um, leaving networks open to let other people use them. It's just a nice thing to share with the world, and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, there are ethical concerns on that. I, I, you know, tend to think that most people that leave their networks open do it, um, uh, are allowing you to access their networks. They actually want you to use them. Um, although I can see somebody, people just leave them open through negligence. And of course, the big ISPs don't really want you doing that. Um, Likewise, there's a lot of ethical issues having to do with copyright, uh, trademark, patent. We will talk about those in the la in my last chapter on which I call the missing chapter, because ethics is an important part of of any job. It's an important part of living, but it's especially important to the systems administrator. A Unix systems administrator is a lot like a like your accountant. Um, or your lawyer or um, your doctor in that there are many ethical concerns. You often get access to people's private data and there's often decisions that you have to make in terms of um, do you report something or do you keep it private? Do you just spread it out to everybody you know. Uh, put it on your. Uh, put it on a Twitter feed. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, I guess all I'm saying is that there are many ethical issues that come up, and so I keep coming back to ethics throughout the course because I think ethics is a very important part of being a um, Unix systems administrator, and. Um, and I think most textbooks and most um, classes in systems administration tend to un um, downplay the importance of ethics. They don't highlight just how important it is for the job for a job as a Unix systems administrator or Windows systems administrator. I don't care which, but but just as a systems administrator. Okay, well that's enough said on that, and. Um, I'm going to close by saying goodbye.